pregame.com. Welcome back. Pregame.tv, fourth and final video and NFL video Sunday night game, Cincinnati at New England. Dave, this is going to be your free play, and you know the Patriots as well as anybody. You've been watching them for a long, long time, and to see the decline that we saw on Monday night was mind-boggling. This they, they, they look like something out of the uh, 70s. Uh, when the Patriots, they used to go up to a training camp. Uh, they had their training camp. I, I don't know if they still do or not. It was at Bryant College, which at the time was kind of a small college in Smithfield, Rhode Island. I think Randy it's Randy Vitaha. Uh, was he on that team? Yeah, Plunkett was. There. No, actually, this was Grogan. Oh, Steve, uh, number fourteen. Yeah, actually, it's the. It, and I, I tell you, it's funny because it's the first time uh, I ever realized how hard these some of these guys throw the football. And I'm standing on the sidelines, and uh, Grogan's warming up with with somebody, and. Just, and I'm, I don't know, uh, I'm just standing there shooting the ball with somebody, one of the assistant coaches that I happen to know. And uh, we're just, you know, you could hear this whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> it's like, holy. Right, right, right. I mean, I, it sounded like the guy throwing a baseball. Uh, and Grogan, I'm mean, that guy have a big arm. Yeah, he was good. Uh, you know, and they, they were awful back then. The Patriots, uh, and Grogan was the whole team. Um, but this has been a great organization for a long time. And I, and I still think they, I don't think that's changed at all. But what the Patriots are going right through, uh, through right now is uh, the inevitability that faces every team as it ages. Uh, they're, they're going through a little bit of a decline. I don't think they're going to be a bad team for long. You know, they'll, they'll pile up draft choices, and within a couple of years, they might be back knocking on the Super Bowl door. But right now, this is a team in serious decline. It's shown all year long. It, they didn't look good in the preseason. I know it's preseason, but they didn't look good. Uh, they haven't looked good at all in the regular season. You really want to know how bad they looked? You can make a case that they looked even worse in beating the Raiders than they did on Monday night when it was a disaster at Kansas City. Look, it just got out of hand at Kansas City. Uh, uh, but they, they look really bad against the Raiders, who yeah. suck, okay? Uh, the Raiders are the worst team in the league. They're even worse than Jacksonville in for them to basically struggle to put any offensive points up against Oakland, uh, that's, that's a red flag, a major red flag. I think we already, I think the Mankins trade was a tip off, that the organization's starting to look at things and say, we gotta start making some moves for next year and the year after. Maybe we can get lucky this year and contend, win the division or something like that, but I, I think they understood at the end of last year, this was no longer a championship level football team. And that, to me, was what precipitated the Mankins trade. There was some behind-the-scenes stuff, too. Mankins and Belichick haven't exactly been on the same page Would you reportedly have for a few years. Would you Ryan Mallett as early as they did, the one bad preseason game, and then he shipped off to Houston? Yeah, I think, they, well, they're only going to carry two quarterbacks, and I think they like the kid from Eastern Illinois a little better okay. uh, in terms of long-term. I, look, I, I, I don't know Ryan Mallett. Uh, that what I've heard, uh, physical skills are there might not have the mental skills to be a quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you know, let's face it. A lot of these guys, it, it, it's, it, the, the position requires an awful lot of gray matter that's very active. Sure. Okay, it's a, I don't think there's a tougher position to play in sports. Uh, eh, maybe catcher in baseball. It's a toss-up. Catcher in baseball, quarterback in football. They're both really tough. Goalie in hockey. But you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to be either one of the first two. You better be uh, to be a quarterback in the NFL, high-level quarterback. So, yeah. Uh, uh, the Patriots aren't as bad as they showed Monday, but they're not real good, and the real problem for this team is on the offense. And, of course, they're going to see Cincinnati, a team coming off the bye that's Ooh. looking as good as anybody in the NFL. Boy, the Bengals look great. Uh, Andy Dalton right now looks like a little more than a game manager. I'm not saying he's an elite quarterback, but he seems to be advancing. And the defense on this team, they're good. Yeah. I mean, they're really good. Uh, you know, they got back uh, one of the guys who was hurt last year. His I name is Escape. Yep. Uh, um, th th this is a top level defense. Cincinnati's a team, they got a chance. And they got a real shot. Uh, AJ Green's got to get over that turf toe. That's a nagging injury. Well, yeah, but there's a long way. You know, you need to give him a couple weeks off, give him a couple weeks off. They're going to win the division anyway. Hard, one of the best in the business. Good yep, sharp kid, too. Yep. Uh, they, they've, uh, that organization has done, uh, I'm not going to say a 180, but it's damn close to it. In terms of just their overall attitude, the makeup of the team, not only on the roster, but I think uh, in the front office, it's, it just seems to be more connected to the city than it was previously. The Bengals are doing some good things. Uh, um, stuck with Marvin Lewis. A lot of people well, thought he'd be gone. I'll tell you something else they did. And, and I think this speaks volumes for where that team is right now as an organization. Uh, I'm, I'm not good with names. 
at my, I, I have a tendency to forget names. Uh, it's a kid who they put on the practice squad because his, his daughter has cancer. Right. You know, he was borderline to make the team. But they decided, you know what, we're going we're gonna to make sure we put him on the... jerseys and everything, too, for him. Right. And that way he qualifies for the insurance so his kid can be taken care That's of. That's awesome. That's when you know an, a t an organization started to get it. The Bengals, for years, had a reputation for being really chintzy. Okay, I mean, you know, just uh, the, the worst facilities. Right. And they didn't want to seem to want to spend a lot of money. And that seems to have gone out the window now. And they've got themselves a very cohesive unit that I think the city's completely behind. And uh, they're a Super Bowl contender. There you go, Dave Koken. This is your free play. Cincinnati at New England, Sunday Night Football. After the game last night, or during the game, you actually saw something that weird taking place. Uh, New England actually went from a favorite to an underdog while the Sunday night football game was still taking place. Uh, the odds makers are looking at this going, we're going to get flooded with Cincinnati money at this price. So they moved the line. And I don't know that they've moved it enough, but they've, they've certainly moved it to a point where there's the value on the Bengals is probably gone. You're going to see a lot of numbers, guys, jump on the Patriots now. I don't think that's the way to look in this game. I think the way to look in this game is the total. Uh, and I'm going to look at this from the most elementary standpoint there is. New England's offense stinks, okay? They can't run the football. Their offensive line can't block for Brady. They can't pass block at all. Their receivers seem to be a step slow and are not getting open. And Brady himself doesn't look real good. It's not a very good offense right now. I think the Patriots' defense can still play some football. They had a bad game Monday. I think they can bounce back from that. Cincinnati has a good offense, but I'm not sold completely that they can overrun any defense in the league yet. But I'm really impressed by what I'm seeing out of the Bengal defense. So how does New England's offense match up with Cincinnati's defense? Not real well. And I think the Patriots on the flip side are going to come out. They're going to come out snarling. They got absolutely humiliated in that game with a big audience watching. Their best chance of, of getting a solid effort is on the defensive side. You know, I know it's, it's very hazardous playing totals in the NFL under, particularly in these uh, uh, marquee games uh, before a national TV audience, and this is one of those games. They keep going over, but a lot of them have been fluky overs. I don't think this one's getting there. I think it's going to be an under game. Uh, I'm looking for maybe somewhere in the area of 17-13, 17-14. Actually, a low-scoring game in Foxborough. I'm going to go with the Bengals and the Patriots to stay under the post of total. There you go. So you have the under New England, Cincinnati. You have Indianapolis minus three and a half. A couple of college players. Dave gave out Rutgers minus three at home against Michigan. And I started it off saying take North Carolina plus two against Virginia Tech. That'll do it for our four videos this week. We'll be back next Wednesday afternoon. Dave, anything as far as the baseball series-wise that you're looking at that looks good? Uh, I, I don't think the Royals are going to beat the Angels, no. okay? <laughs> I'm not saying go out there and lay 2-1 to one or whatever the series price is, but yeah. Shoemaker, Shoemaker's ready to go in Game 2 for the Angels. That's a big, big plus. They wouldn't be throwing him out there if he wasn't ready to go. And that pretty much knocks out the one Angel weakness that was there, which is the starting pitching, because Shoemaker's been so good uh, with that splitter. I, I just don't see the Royals being able to beat him. But Ned Yost does have your Danny Ventura ready to go in the middle of the fifth <laughs> inning if they need him. Last thing, because Kershaw is going, but he's a better than two-to-one favorite. Right. Now, would you take Wainwright plus 85? No, no, no. And, and I, I, good luck to anybody who bets it. But to me, it's a silly bet. Wainwright plus a run and a half, minus 130. What? Right. You can only win with one result. I mean, if you're going to take a shot, take a shot in the game. Money line, right? At the money line. To me, sacrificing that much to only win if they lose by one run, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a real smart bet to me. But good luck to, everybody, uh, to those who made it. I'm seeing it all over Twitter. That's the way to play this game. Not for me, it's not. Yeah, Dave's as sharp as they come as far as baseball and, of course, other sports as well. And, Dave... I know uh, just when you're getting caught up on all the football, college basketball right around the corner. And the NHL starts next week as well. <laughs> Get the pucks ready to go, man. There college go. And by the way, can I give a quick, I'm going to give a yeah. quick tip here quick. in college basketball. Um, and I'm doing this myself. Uh, and I've got a lot of resources available and, and time to do it. There are now 350 plus teams <laughs> in Division I. Yes. You can't, I don't think you can grasp them all. I don't think anybody can. Now, you can use somebody else's numbers and maybe get a rough idea. Boy, I, you know, I don't like handicapping that way. I like knowing the personnel. My best advice this year is pick three or four conferences and really zero in on them. 
so that you can keep track of these teams. Maybe it's the conferences closest that you live in, the conference you're the biggest fan of. I know for me, Mountain West, Big West, Big Sky, Pac-12, those are going to be the conferences where you get most of my plays this year. If it means I'm not playing the Big East game of the week or whatever it is, uh, I don't care. I'm trying to win games, and I'm going to be tracking the teams and playing most of my games on the teams that I have the best feel and the best sense to and the best knowledge of. I think that's the way to go in college basketball right now. You've got to focus on less to get more results. There you go. Can't disagree with that. Great information, great tip. Folks, that's going to do it for us. We'll be back next week. Have an awesome weekend. Hope all your games turn out well, and I hope that we can be helpful here on those videos. Ken Thompson, Dave Koken, pregame.tv.